Hi guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics, and this is Norsden Land to Niso, episode 35. And this is bothering me again. So, the countries of the world got together and decided that Antarctica, the um, abandoned continent of snow and ice, uh, would be divided amongst them. So, here's what they did. They sat down in front of a huge table, and um, that didn't happen. And they divided up Antarctica according to the area of the total land area that their continent uh, had. And when I say area, I mean um, what they did was they drew a ring at 89 degrees south. Uh, everything inside 89 degrees south is kind of like an all man's land. Uh, no one owns it, but you're free to go into it, but you can't do anything in it except, like, walk through it and stuff. Um, or visit the South Pole. So, so what they did was they took the total land area of the world. I guess I should say we. And we uh, mapped it to this ring, the length of this ring, in degrees, which is 360. And then depending on the land area that the uh, continent occupies, that corresponded to how much of an angle you get along this line. And then from there, your claim goes all the way out to the ocean. So the way that we did this is we started uh, with the north-south, or I'm sorry, we started with the east-west countries. Uh, we started from left and went to right or um, 180 degrees west to 180 degrees east. So uh, that means we were actually first. And you'll notice the map is actually oriented um, prime meridian, anti-meridian right now. So the very first continent uh, heading east from the anti-meridian is uh, North America or Norsden Land. So here is Norsden Land's claim. So then what, the, uh, then what the individual countries did is say, okay, well, here's my claim. So the very first westernmost country to occur is such and such, and it has the westernmost, I'm sorry, yes, the westernmost occurring, and it has XY area. Therefore, it gets everything from the western edge out to whatever fraction of land it has inside the continent. But because Norsden Land is the only country on the continent of, well, Norsden Land, replacing North America, we get this entire swath. And then next over would be South America, and they get this swath. Africa is much larger, and it gets this one. This is Europe's. And then this is Asia's, and this is Australia. So you can notice this isn't an exactly fair way to, to divide the continent because South America gets all this extra land. North America doesn't get that much. Look at Australia, although that might actually be proportional. Um, but I know Europe is definitely not proportional. They have more land than us, and we have more area than them. Uh, but, oh my gosh, look at Asia. It's like 2,500 miles from end to end. Now, of course, there are lots and lots of countries on Asia. So this gets divided down. But still, when you consider that Russia's probably half of Asia, that means that they're going to get, like, this entire pie piece right here, which is ridiculous. Um, so they probably have more land than us, despite us being the only country on our continent. But... Here is our claim, Norsden Land, Antarctica. And uh, you'll notice we have um, different, different things on it. Um, we have some interesting areas. Uh, we span, now here's one interesting thing. Norsden Land itself spans from, oh, um, nine, minus seven degrees Long, um, latitude all the way up to 75 latitude. So the fact that this actually starts 
at 73 degrees latitude means that Norsden land has at some point land between all of the equator and 89 degrees north because as soon as the north end of Norsden land takes up gives out then Norsden land Antarctica picks up on the south and goes all the way to 89 degrees so like here we have the Armour Peninsula uh, here's the Edward the Sixth Peninsula uh, and then we have the Horlick Mountains down here in the south and then we have the Transantarctic Mountains running across right here uh, the neat thing about our position is we have the closest land to the South Pole so anybody trying to uh, get there has to um, use the ice I guess um, walk across the ice and then they have to um, go across the Transantarctic Mountains and then walk the rest of the way in then you get to the South Pole or you could do like a Asia um, well, not Asia, but but you could you could walk through Asia's land and have to go all the way through this high country, ten thousand, eleven thousand feet, and then all the way down to the South Pole. Um, pick your choice. So the other thing is we have um, a north kind of sector divided at eighty first degrees south, and then we have a second sector between eighty first and eighty five degrees south. And then we have like a southern sector from 85 degrees south all the way down to the southern border, which is right here. Okay, so I have created a, um, a table of Nor Norsden Land loca location rise and set times. So I have all of these locations um, calculated and tabulated. And the ones we're going to be looking at are the Norsden Land Antarctica locations, which is the... Um, these five. So if we go to the Sun Times and uh, we scroll over, we can find um, that the system does not, uh, I'm sorry, the continent does not act at all like the rest of Norsden Land. Um, if we go to the Armour Peninsula, which is where we're going to be going, um, the Sun is above the horizon all the day. But then if we go to what we call the summer, but is actually um, the southern hemisphere's winter, the sun is below the horizon all day. And uh, you're, you only get uh, atmospheric glow. Now, for the southern border, uh, that is more extreme. Uh, you get a sun above horizon the entire day, and there's no twilight. It is completely uh, it is completely in the sky. And then then it starts to cycle like a day. And then um, when you get more towards the sum the summer or our winter, the sun goes below horizon all day, and there's no twilight, meaning that it is pitch black for like five months, which is pretty insane. Uh, and unfortunately, we're in June. So here is the um, map of Norsden Land, Antarctica, as it corresponds to Minecraft. By exact, unbelievable coincidence, this happens to be directly south of Norsden Land. I cannot imagine how lucky I was. And end. If you consider the lat lawn grid that we were using in Norsden Land, this corresponds exactly to the South Pole. So I don't know what was going on with that seed, but it is the most realistic seed I have ever seen. It, it things are right where you expect them to be. So um, we're going to the Armour Peninsula, and it, it's going to be dark because it's June. So, unfortunately, we'll, we'll have to land in the dark. But at least there'll be ice there. So we're going to land on the ice uh, with the A340. So one thing that I wanted to mention real quick before we go to the flight. Um, last time we flew from uh, 
New Venice, a.k.a. Guadalajara, to um, Santiago, Chile. And the calculator was off by two hours. I figured out the reason it was wrong by two hours was because Guadalajara uses a UTC-5 um, time zone. So we were actually leaving uh, two hours too early. And that is why um, we had arrived at 5 a.m. Had I had used the Guadalajara um, time zone, that wouldn't have happened. So I actually don't care about what time uh, we arrive because it's going to be pitch black no matter what. Um, so we are going to leave at about 2 o'clock because that's when we, we arrived early in the morning and then I, um, I hung out with some, some people, made some friends, and then decided around 2 o'clock that it was time to go. So that's what we're doing. And um, there has been extensive testing through the A340 and unfortunately it has not performed as the engineers calculated it would. Um, maximum range is only 7,800 miles, which means that we cannot fly direct to um, direct to Dubai, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, but all these other flights can be done uh, with uh, with one tank full, and uh, this one is going to be really hard to do. New Venice to Sydney. Okay, so here we are uh, where we left off. Of course, it's 2 o'clock now. Um, so the beauty of the world is at hand now. You can actually see the mountains surrounding Santiago. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the startup procedure. So um, I will come back when it's time for uh, the pushback and engine startup. So see you guys then. Okay, so we're ready for the pushback now. Are we getting a pushback? There it goes. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately... As you know, last time we didn't get the uh, the land again. I promise this time I will double check and make sure that the video is going so that you can see it. Okay, engine area is clear. Okay, pushback is complete. Just wait for this guy to kind of move back a little bit before I... Uh... Okay, he should be good now. Okay, thrust levers to idle. Check. Mood selector ignition start. Start engine one. Fuel flow on. need to put the parking brake on, unless we want to go flying, which we do, just not right now. Okay, fuel flow looks good, and the engines have synchronized. Engine 2.
stay on. Okay, fuel flow is good. And RPM sync to engine three. Okay, uh, RPM sync, engine four. stabilized and RPM stabilized. Okay, APU generator can go off and the APU can be shut down. Select your normal. Strobe light on. Nav lights on. Taxi lights on. Set the uh, altimeter. Standby instruments look good. Avionics is an interesting thing now. Because we're going to Antarctica, there are no navigational systems there. Which means we're just going to have to... Um, we're just going to have to uh, fly uh, in a southward direction and navigate by ourselves, which is kind of a little bit scary. Autopilot setting off. I'm going to continue running through this checklist until we're ready to taxi, so see you then. Okay, we're now ready to uh, request taxi clearance. And we're going all the way south. Oh, I didn't know they had an ATAS. Let me uh, do that real quick. Okay, um, so the reason we're going to be doing... Uh, a VFR flight, and the reason you can't do an IFR flight is because an IFR flight does not exist to some random place in Antarctica. Passenger signs on. Okay, so now we can proceed with taxi.
So I'm not going to show much of the flight because I actually want to do stuff in uh, Minecraft when we get there. So uh, what I'm going to do is show the takeoff maybe up to about 15,000 feet. Then I'll stop it and then uh, I will show when the sun sets due to southern flying. And then, um, and then after that, uh, I will show the descent and landing. I have a fuel tank of gas because uh, there's no fueling there, so we're going to have to fly down and then fly back up without refueling. Let's start running through the before takeoff checklist. Flaps can go to position two. Check. Check and make sure the spoilers have retracted. Good. Landing lights can go on. Engine instruments and nav look good. V1, VR, V2. Okay. Should be good now. I don't want the flight being too long, so I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back when it's time for uh, requesting takeoff clearance. Okay, we're ready to uh, request VFR clearance now. Tell him to go around. So I wonder what he's thinking now. They just cleared me for takeoff. So I'm a little bit concerned this runway is too short, so I'm uh, kind of going around the back side of the runway. I'm going to position now and come back after I've positioned. Okay, they just told him to go around. Uh, let's go ahead and take off now. Now, I learned a trick from someone, and that is we can uh, actually cheat the runway a little bit, because I'm afraid it's too short. So we're going to go to 40%. Full takeoff thrust, set. And release the brakes. Eighty.
B1, rotate, B2, positive right, gear up, flaps 1, and flaps 0. Activating autopilot. Turning off auto brakes. Okay, 250 knots. Taxi lights off, and uh, once about 10,000 landing lights can go off. I'm actually not going to be contacting uh, air traffic control because we're now going south out of the civilized areas. I'm going to turn to heading 200. Quite a beautiful sky today. See how high the Andes Mountains are because uh, we're now at about 9,000 feet and they're still higher. Uh, in fact, okay, I wanted to check and make sure that we weren't gonna crash into them. 10,000 feet. Accelerate to 280. Landing lights off. And the sky is very uh, smooth, so I'm going to turn off fast seat belts. Okay, now it should be quiet until transition altitude. You'll notice I've selected 39,000 feet as our cruising altitude because I want optimum fuel conservation. I do not want to cut it close.
Okay, here comes transition altitude. Two nine or nine or two. Target now 0.7 Mach. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to continue accelerating up this profile to Mach 0.82. Mach 0.82 at 39,000 feet is uh, long range or longevity uh, cruise. So that's what we use um, when we want to last as long as we can in the air. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here and we'll come back when I'm uh, out at where the uh, where the sun sets so see you guys at that very very southward place So we've just entered cruise now, and I'm right now looking at my cabin pressure. Um, it's climbing for some reason, and uh, I need to watch this. This is the change of the um, air. At, ah, yes, it looks like it's finally equalizing. Okay, we're going to have to monitor that. Um, 8,000 is a typical number. 9,000 is kind of high. Um, I think at 10,000 the oxygen masks deploy, so, uh, yeah. Alright, looks good. See you at the Antarctic Circle. Okay, so um, we're uh, at about 36 degrees south now. And uh, I figured out how to trick the navigation system. Uh, all we have to do is put in an airport on the exact opposite side of the world and it will tell us exactly how to get there and then what we do is we follow this line as far as it goes or as far as we need to and then we get off of it so this will draw the direct line between the two
and then we just fly like this. So, uh, see you guys at the Antarctic Circle this time. Okay, so sunset is about to happen, but it's not going to happen for the reason I thought. Uh, instead of the sun going down during the day, it's going to go down when it normally would in the late afternoon, close to night, and then it will never come back up again. One of the neat things about the panel is the night light will automatically come on. So I don't even have to turn the lights on. It just automatically comes on. So right about now, the... Um, southernmost circumpolar constellations are coming into view. Uh, we would have never seen these back in Norsden land because we're north of, well actually you know what, I take that back because part of Norsden land goes to seven degrees south. So we will see the circumpolar constellations uh, during the summer in the uh, the south near like uh, South Point East or South Point West We're over the um, far South Pacific right now. Um, Chile is about at our, um, around our eight o'clock. And we're now at 50 degrees South. So this means that very soon um, we're going to get some bad weather. And yes, I can see the clouds are already coming higher um, because we are approaching the um, the boreal air currents um, for the south, uh, notably the Drake Passage um, that always has bad weather. So um, that's coming. But then after that, it clears out because, as you all know, Antarctica is a desert. And now as you can see, the light has automatically turned on inside. So this is what it looks like uh, during night inside the cockpit. Although um, the first flight was a night flight, so um, who cares? Oh, the sun's about to go down. You can actually kind of see we're, we're far south enough that the sun is appearing to circle the sky rather than transit it.
There it goes, and uh, it's never coming back up again until we head north, and it is about to get really cold. See you guys for the approach and landing. Okay, everyone, here we are at 72 degrees south and 122 degrees east. Below us is Norsden Land, Antarctica. This is our destination over here, and believe it or not, it is time to descend. So let's bring up the uh, checklists here. There is no airport info. We're going to have to leave altimeter at 299 or 2 because we don't have any sort of weather report down there. And now we descend um, 24,000 Mach 0.75. Now, as for getting back to... Um, Santiago, we have 48%. We'll probably have like 45% by the time we get back. Um, we should be able to make it back because of the uh, natural logarithm effect. But um, it is possible that we might not be able to um, make it back, in which case we can just land at a smaller airport further south. We don't have to go all the way to Santiago. Okay, so the plan is to descend like normal, and then when we get to um, when we get to the location that we want, uh, we are going to um, when we get to that location, we are going to uh, pass over at once at a very low altitude, maybe a thousand or five hundred feet, uh, and look at the ice and make sure that it's safe to land on. So it's confusing on this map because it's a square, but um, it looks like it's almost 500 miles to our target. Um, but that's not the case because um, the longitudes are scrunched down down here. So um, we go through them much faster. Like you can see um, the target's coming up very soon. And this is what it looks like below us. So this right here is what we're aiming for. And we're about 100 miles out from it right now. Getting back is much easier. Um, it is as simple as... It is as simple as targeting uh, Santiago and then um, creating the flight plan in the GPS. And then about midway out, we're going to create an IFR flight plan so that we can land using IFR vectors. But we can't create an IFR flight plan while we're landed because there's no airport.
There it is. Norriston Land, Antarctica. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video now until we get to flight level 240. Okay, everyone, uh, we're coming down to flight level 240 now, so I'm going to extend the descent to uh, flight level 180, and the new speed is 0.68 Mach. I guess uh, now we'll come back at flight level 180. We're coming down now to flight level 180. So uh, next is 12,000 and 300 knots. And we're ignoring the altimeter settings. So on the top down view, I, I guess I should really call it an island because the Armour Peninsula is technically a set of islands connected together with ice. But this is our target right here. So we're getting pretty close to it. Unfortunately, there's a lot more clouds than I had expected, so I can't see the ice yet. See you all at 12,000. Here's 12,000-ish. 12,000, 10,250. We're coming down into some cumulus clouds now, so I'm going to go ahead and um, fasten seatbelt signs now. We're about to below 10,000, so landing lights on. And it looks like now we want to begin our turn. Whoops, 10,000 uh, kind of snuck up. Uh, 
Our new altitude for approach will be 3,500 feet. And then it's final approach. Man, these are some pretty low clouds. Uh, it's going to be kind of difficult to get down there. I think the moon is up. Not 100% sure on that one. No, maybe not. All right, well, there's water down there. Uh, obviously can't land on that. Um, but we are heading towards the island. So hopefully that is icy and flat. Okay, I see ice. It looks pretty flat, which is pretty good. Uh, now that we know what it looks like, I'm going to continue descending to 1500, and that will be the uh, observation altitude. Okay, I see a mountain. That's no good. Um, but there is a lot of ice right through here, which uh, is good. Okay, we got a um, radio altimeter call out. So we can actually uh, localize them. And here is 1,500 feet. Okay, here's the ice. 
And we are now over Norriston Land, Antarctica. We need to be able to gather as much information as we can on... Um, this looks pretty flat. Uh, I'm relatively happy with this. So uh, I'm going to start the stopwatch now. Okay, and 35 seconds now, this should be enough room for us to land. So this is going to be our landing spot. There's one minute turning to heading one zero. Okay, let's set the um, altimeters now. Whoops. Looks like about, um, yeah, two nine or nine or six is the pressure. Okay. All right, turning to heading There's the moon. Okay, I'm going to arm the auto spoilers now. Okay. And now beginning the timer. Auto brake set to setting one. Speed to twenty. Flaps position one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go six minutes. Um, 
in this direction. That should be a minute plus, about five minutes for the approach. Um, I'm going to pause the video now and come back when it's time for that turn. See you then. Okay, it's time to make that turn now. Turning to heading one nine or zero. Okay, now we're going to hold this for about 10 or 20 seconds. And now we turn to heading 100. Wow, look at that. The southernmost Pacific Ocean. In fact, you know what? That actually looks a little bit like ice. It might actually be ice. Hard to tell. Okay, speed established 200. Flaps to 2. Landing gear going down. We have three lock lights. And now we're just waiting for us to get over the ice so that we can begin the ground, um, the uh, glide slope. It's quite cloudy here. Okay, speed 180, flaps 3, K 
can't see that mountain right now. And uh, flaps four. I don't normally put them to floor four, but we have a very high angle of attack, so I would like to do that. Okay, this is it. This is going to be our glide slope. Uh, we should be all ready to land on the ice. We're going to get some annoying messages, those stupid don't sinks things. Um, but we're across a glide slope now. So I'm going to disable the autopilot and we're going to land this thing on the ice. Heading off, speed off, altitude off, auto throttle, autopilot. And I'm taking manual control of the aircraft now. kind of very hard to tell where you are. Okay, this is it, flaring, and, uh, whoops, one more second, um, okay, um, do we hit the ice? Yes, we did. Okay. I'm sliding like crazy, though. Okay. Uh, reverse thrusting. <laughs> Man, this is crazy. I'm actually going to release the brakes now because I'm concerned there might be a uh, brake fire. And when we get um, below about 30 knots, there we go. Uh, thrust idle. And now we're just going to roll out a little bit on the ice. Okay, let's go ahead and stop now. Uh, let's see if anti-skid helps any, because this is really slippery. Wow, this is ridiculous. I'm going to have to use reverse thrust again.
Okay, this is it. And we've come to a stop on the Antarctic ice in Norsden Land, Antarctica. If you can imagine that. Well, that was crazy. Um, we're stopped now. There's no taxi. So I won't need to turn those on. Uh, flaps up. Retract spoilers. Landing lights off. Elevator trim return to center. All right, so I'm going to pause the video again because um, I don't want to make it too long. And the when I shut the engines down in the final craft off, I will come back. Uh, so see you then. Okay, so this is it. The Great Southern Shutdown. Thrust idle. One, two, three, four. Beacon light off. And now we better hope these things start again when it's time to go back home. Panel light off. And battery and electrical system off. and it's perfectly silent. Um, let's open a door, shall we, to the wilderness? It is literally completely silent. Um, the wind is only at one knot, so... Um, yeah. Basically complete silence. Okay, so there's our mountain. That's actually straight ahead. Um, I guess I'll walk a little bit, um, maybe no further than a quarter mile away from the airplane because the airplane is like the home. Uh, it contains all the heat and everything, and I'm actually going to shut the door right now until we're ready to get out. Um, but like I said, the sun's not rising, so um, I'm going to collect... Uh, I and everyone else on this plane is going to collect their things, and then we're going to head out into the chilly wilderness. So see you in a couple minutes. Okay, so here we are. It's uh, minus 20 degrees centigrade, and uh, you can see we're... Um, very, very far from the southernmost point of Norsden Land, over 5,000 miles. So we're a long way from home, but um, nevertheless, here we are at Norsden Land, Antarctica. This is the Armour Peninsula, and um, well, we can build wherever we want. Um, probably not a good idea to build too close to the. Um, the edge there because of uh, well obvious reasons when the summer comes the ice could melt um, but we're going to go ahead and build a snow shelter now well kind of not technically but something like so um, I don't suppose there's anything that we can really do with the ice um, but let's start laying down 
Do we want wool on the ground or do we want tin? Tin can docks. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why I brought tin. Uh, tin's not the best thing to build with. Actually, you know what? Let's use wood. Of course, the wood would have come from my uh, the cargo hold in my aircraft because we did bring some materials with us, obviously. Um, that should freeze over soon, and the day-night cycle here is going to be funny because it's going to be like, oh, the sun's coming up, sun's coming, up. oh, it's going back down again because uh, it's winter here. So the sun will never come up. Uh, now for. You see, if it's minus 20 centigrade, we obviously want some sort of insulation, but the the ground, the ice will conduct a lot more than the air will. So, okay, let's, ah, yes, yes. Let's use wool on the first layer. because it touches the ice. And then on the second layer, we will go ahead and uh, do that. Um, let's go ahead and pop a torch down, but we need to be careful because I do not want to melt ice. There we go. And now we will use tin. Oh no! What a shame. Shoot, did I mess up? Yes, I did mess up here. One second. Okay. Um, and that was all we were going to see of day. Unfortunately. It's night again. Um, but at least there's no mob spawning. That's the great thing. Uh, I'm actually going to... Man, what's up with the frame rate? Hasn't been doing this before. Uh, I'm going to bet that it's probably like underground ice flows and stuff. Actually, I didn't need that one there. Check. Yes, I did.
Oh my gosh, this frame rate. Yep, it's definitely the ice flows. Actually, let's get a door first, because it might be quite comfortable if we actually sealed off the um, sealed off the thing. Um, hmm. No, because iron doors have windows too. Unfortunately, I was gonna think maybe it would be cool if I use an iron door, but but they have. And now we can make a bed. Then, of course, every place needs a furnace. put down a nice chest and in the chest we put down some extra materials so that I don't have to bring this stuff down every single time oh what the heck this could be useful I guess okay so this is our very own Build Your Antarctica Shed. And, uh, well, here it is. It looks like a boat on the ice, which is actually kind of funny. Um, but this is it. And uh, it looks really great. That's awesome. Uh, so now I guess I'm going to spend the rest of the time fishing um, because I can get lots of... Um, interesting fishes and uh, well you know kind of live off the land um, wow 6,000 miles to Gigopolis so that was pretty much um, all I wanted to accomplish this episode we have a um, Antarctica facility at our claim uh, in the future we might go to um, further south like the Horlick Mountains or something where there's actually land to walk on. Um, but you may have been asking yourself, why are we doing this? And the reason is practice. It's just like going to the moon. We rode a very large craft, the A340, to a place where no one lives, and we set up base here. So um, that was basically the whole idea behind that. So by practicing uh, taking just a little bit of stuff, a very far location, and then set up is a lot like what the uh, Apollo astronauts had to do. Forget if they um, did Antarctic training or not, but um, that is basically how it's done, is you just go to some uninhabited place like this. What was that? And, uh, learn to live off the land even though there is none like I'm doing right now so uh, I think that's about it for this episode um, in the course of between this episode and the next I will be uh, creating the rest of route W45 and creating route N100 the west coast uh, the, the West Coast Road or Highway and um, the next episode we will build a launch pad and a missile and we will launch the missile 
and uh, send it off just like we would a sounding rocket. So we are finally going to space. There we go, that's enough for now. Uh, oh. Yeah, I know, it's annoying. Actually, I kind of like it because you can see all the stars here. And uh, if this were um, the South Pole, the stars would actually appear to be doing this instead of going the direction that they are um, because we're at the pole, or at least close enough, so it would be more like this but you you get the point so thank you for joining me i'm going to get warm by the fire here and i will see you guys next time bye oh yeah back at norston land <laughs>